All right, so I was recently featured on the Jobber podcast talking about AI tools and automations. This was one of the episodes that we did in a panel discussing some AI tools. Uh, this one on here, we were talking about new leads, more customers, high rankings. And then a recent one that just came out was talking about low cost hacks to maximize your customer list. All this stuff has to do with running automations using Jobber. So what I thought I'd do is make a video of some of these things on how to do all this stuff. So let me jump in here. Basically, the, the takeaways from this video is you're going to learn how to set up these automations. I'm going to kind of walk you through that. We're going to discuss what exactly should you be saying on these automations and, and how you should go about doing them. And then how often should you be setting up these automations as far as like how often should they be running? And the plan for this video is to show you the automations, walk you through some basic scripts, and then help you conceptualize what your funnels might look like into different pillars. So let's get right into it. All right. So in your jobber, what they allow you to do is to connect Zapier automations. And what Zapier is, it's a tool. And there's two ways that you can do zaps into jobber. The first one is you can do job zaps from, from your jobber to other things. So a common one that we see is into MailChimp or other platforms that you can then do things. So what exactly are these automations and how do you get them set up? You can set up a Zapier account, you can set up a free Zapier account or a paid one. And over here, you go in here and you log in to your account and then you set up your triggers. So what are some of the triggers? You could say in your jobber, when a new client is created, then do something. So some of the ones that we've seen are when a new client is created, then add them to this Google sheet or add them to this contact in your Google account. When a new invoice is created, add them to this Google sheet so then your bookkeeper can see that. Um, when a job is completed, Jobber has some internal automations where you can send out the review request. Um, you can also connect other platforms on here. When a job is completed, you can do something else. So a simple one to this is like a new job, a job is completed. Then it could go to MailChimp and it could send out um, an email thanking them and then asking them for, for a review or asking them for a referral, which is even more impactful. Hey, thanks for doing a great job. Thanks so much for selecting us. Hope we did a great job. If you know anyone else, here's a $50 coupon that you can forward to them. A very simple one to get a referral. Now, here's a really popular one that we're going to dive in on this one specifically, the new quote, because I think this is a big area of opportunity for a lot of businesses. So over here, this is the funnel that we use when we think about a marketing plan and growing a business. And this funnel right here is what happens when a lead comes in, then an appointment needs to be scheduled and an estimate needs to go out and a sale needs to happen. In Jobber, you can obviously schedule an appointment online using their online booking tool. Sometimes you just want to get the lead, but this estimate to a sale internally in the Jobber platform, they have some automations that are set up to follow up, but they're not as robust as some people would like. So what we do and recommend is this one right here for a new quote. Anytime that a new quote is created in your Jobber account, then kick it into an automation like MailChimp, for example, that will then nurture that, that quote for you until it gets approved or denied. And if it gets approved, you can automatically have it removed from an automation like a MailChimp email sequence. Some of the emails that you could put are like, uh, hey, just following up on the quote or hey, 30 minutes ago, I just sent out this quote, wanted to make sure that you received it. That's a really good one just to catch all like maybe they didn't get it. Maybe it went to spam. They respond and say like, no, I didn't get it. Then after like three days, like, hey, wanted to see if you have any questions. Here's a link to our frequently asked questions. Really good one. Then another one is, hey, are you still considering this? Just want to let you know our estimates expire after 30 days. A good call to action, giving them a time so that it closes out. So those are some quick ones that you could add and build in here to then nurture your quote. Inside of those, you could do other simple ones like, hey, meet the team, read this recent customer testimonial, uh, read this blog post about something that's relevant to that specific service that they offered. Those types of ones are really good for the quote process. So that's a really good automation from something happening in your jobber, then kicking it out to a platform like MailChimp, or there's other platforms out there that do automations, um, connections. There's a bunch of different ones. Um, new requests came in. Sometimes people will say, 
well, well, let's go back to new quote approval. Sometimes when a new quote approval happens, then you want to send this out to like a project manager or someone who runs point on your jobs. That way they know like, hey, I need to go in and get this approval and then schedule this. So that's a really good one. So that way it's not just lingering in your jobber, but it will send them a notification. So maybe you don't send this through MailChimp. Maybe you connect to your Gmail and send an email out through your Gmail account to someone. So that's a really good one. Uh, new request. Anytime a new request is created, something could happen as well. So these are some of the automations that we've seen, and this is happening in your jobber and then kicking it out. I want to show you the other side to this, which is things kicking into your jobber. And there's a really nice one for this. A lot of times for businesses, when they the jobber has the lead form that you can fill out, sometimes it can be a little bit long. And so you might want to just make a quick lead capture, which only has like three questions, especially if you're running Google ads and it's going to a landing page. What you want to do is make a very simple form that just has their name, their email, their phone number, and then a quick, like, tell us a little bit of information. And what you can do is when that form is cre is submitted, let's say it's Gravity Forms. This is a popular one, but there's a bunch of other forms out there. Then you can automatically send an automation into Jobber to create a client and even go further and create a request, depending on what your cycle looks like, and even creating a quote. And so you can automate that when something happens, then this happens. So when someone fills out this form, then this happens. Another really good one for this is, let's say that you uh, do lawn care and you work with uh, realtors, property managers, people like that, and they have a specific location that they need to get on the schedule. Then what you could do is create a separate form for them on your website. They fill out that form and then it automatically creates the client if it needs to, or creates a request. So that way your team can then follow up on that needing to happen. Obviously, you could have it so that they could schedule the job as well. But these are just ways that you can automate these things happening in your jobber to alleviate a lot of manual process. A lot of times when we talk to people, they have a lead form on their website, and then they're manually adding them into jobber every single time. So that's a very quick fix for that. Um, so that's the two ways that you can run automations from jobber through Zapier in and out. So let's just re re go through this. We talked about how to set up the automations. You go into your jobber. You log into your account, and then you go and you log into your Gmail or your MailChimp, whatever, and then you can connect different things to happen. What do you say? I gave you some scripts on things that you can say, and how often should you do them? Typically, what we've seen is you don't want to bombard people with automations. So usually you want to give two to three day gaps on your automations. If you give like, okay, someone filled out this form, then you definitely want to hit them up right away and say, thanks so much for contacting us but then you don't wanna be bombarding them with automation. So typically like two to three day sequences. I showed you the automations, I walked you through the scripts. And so now what I'd like you to do is just start thinking about how you're gonna build your funnel. So in your business, this is what your conversion funnel should look like. A lead comes in, it schedules an appointment, and this could be in the same step if they schedule online. An estimate goes out to them and then a sale happens. We talked about a sale to review or referral. We talked about contact lead to schedule an appointment, schedule an appointment to estimate proposal. And these are all things, again, that you can automate in that system. And so start to build out each one of these steps, what this is going to look like, what's this going to look like. The low-hanging fruit for most companies is this one to this one because a lot of times you know this, things get trapped in your estimate, you get busy, you never really follow up. Maybe you call them once or email them. But this process here is a honey hole. And a lot of times if you just automate this, you're going to get more sales and increase your sales conversions because you're actually following up with your leads. So maybe you start here. Cool. If you're interested in getting some of this stuff set up for your business, that's what we do as a company. We help build out an entire marketing plan. We do a marketing audit. I'll put a link down below. If not, look forward to seeing you next video. Hit like and subscribe.